Hello, everyone. My name is Andrew. And I'm Suzanne. And this is the Culips English Podcast. Today, we have a Chatterbox episode planned for you. Chatterbox is the Culip series where you get to listen in to completely natural English conversations between two native speakers. And today I'm joined by my co host, Suzanne. Hey there, Suzanne. Hey, Andrew. It's so great to talk to you. It's been a minute, hasn't it? Yeah, it totally has. How's it going? I'm doing pretty well, Suzanne. And today we have an interesting topic for our listeners. We're talking all about working from home and home offices. Yes, something a lot of us can relate to in some capacity. Absolutely. There are so many people around the world these days working from home. And so we thought it would be a great topic to talk about. But just before we get into it, we should let all of our listeners know about the study guide because there's a study guide available for this episode on our website, culips.com, C-U-L-I-P-S.com. And in the study guide, there is a transcript. So everyone, we'd encourage you to download the study guide and follow along as you listen to our talk here today. Yes, the study guide is a great resource, so check it out. We are talking today about working from home because I, I think like many people around the world, you and I have been working a lot from home over the last several months with this whole COVID global pandemic situation going on. And just a second ago, before we started recording, we were comparing our home office setups. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Let's start by talking about what you do at home. So when you're working at home, what exactly are you doing? Yeah. So it's funny because before COVID, I actually was still working from home. I've always worked from home, but I would have people come over. Okay. So now it's all online. It's all virtual. That's the difference. Okay. So I coach pronunciation for actors mostly. Yeah, that's what I do. I work with actors on accents, dialects, and the American accent for acting purposes. So not changing people's accents for their daily life, but for a role, for the a part that they're going to play. So if some actor gets cast in a movie and they need to have a British accent for the role, then you would coach them on how to achieve that British accent, right? Exactly. Yeah, I have a few clients who are British um, and francophone, but say I have uh, British students who need an American accent. I guess actually <laughs> my example was a poor example because of course you are American, so it would make more sense if you teach them the American accent. But I teach all accents. So I teach people to do um, us, you know, different kinds of English speaking accents, mm -hmm. but also like a German accent, a French accent. Um, a Hindi accent, whatever the part calls for. Okay. Yes. Awesome. So I also teach foreign accents and then also native speaker accents. And I specialize in American accent um, just because that's where my research is. Mm. But yeah, so that's um, what I do. And it's actually very easily done from home or from a computer. Right. You don't really need an office per se for that kind of work, right? No, you can do it anywhere. You could be on vacation, really, and be coaching. So <laughs> as long as you have strong internet. <laughs> right. You need a strong internet signal. So before COVID happened, uh, most of your clients were coming to your house then and you'd meet one-on-one -on -one and work together that way. But now that COVID has hit, and that's not really safe to do. You've transitioned more 
to online work, uh, I guess you're using like video chatting software like Zoom or Skype for this. Exactly. Yes, mostly Zoom because we can record the sessions, which oh, is yeah. invaluable for the students to play again and again over the week. Mm -hmm. Totally. We're using video conferencing and also apps. We use video apps. So a lot of my students will record the homework that I send them on uh, the Marco Polo app. Okay. And then I can watch it and give notes and send them a video in return, which is great. Cool. So I can uh, work with them that way. Or they could even do like a, a kind of, uh, I have some of my students who are working on English, mm -hmm. like as a second language. I have two students that I work with for English fluency. So not so it's for specific purposes. I have one uh someone who owns their own business. Okay. And also someone who is as an actor learning to be more fluent so they can work with English speaking directors and producers. And I have them do videos where they present their work or present making a smoothie or activities that they can record on a video on that app. Cool. So let's get back now to the home office setup. So we know that you're working yeah. a lot online, <laughs> but you're, you've kind of moved your home office into your bedroom, right? And you were showing yep. me uh, some of the features of the home office. Could you describe them? Of course, our listeners can't see your bedroom, but you could describe oh. how it's set up for them paint a mental picture for them. <laughs> this is a piece of work. A piece of work, a masterpiece. <laughs> oh, yes. There's sarcasm in my tone. Mm. I have two kitchen stools with boxes on top of them and then my computer on top of that and my microphone on top of the other stool uh, to, to help me with the height so that I'm not leaning over. <laughs> looking into a computer and hurting my neck. Uh -huh. um, I'm sitting on the bed. I have my waters on the nightstand. I have my... Your cables, your extension cords. <laughs> yes. I don't know if you guys know MacGyver, but he was uh, an, a character in an old TV show back in the day, an American TV show. I don't know if he was a cop or a vigilante I think he was a detective, maybe. Maybe, yeah, whatever. He fought crime, but like he never <laughs> had the right tools. He always had to be like, get me a rope, a dental floss, and some tape. And then he'd like somehow, you know, like a, he'd make a radio out of <laughs> random things that he would find in, some in, floss a, in a house. And some rope, yes. <laughs> right. Like he would come up with like this brilliant, you know, way of doing it. So I sometimes feel like I'm MacGyvering mm -hmm. my my workspace mm -hmm. uh, to try to make it something it's not. Right. Another word that we could use to describe it is makeshift, right? It's kind of a makeshift yeah. office. It's something that um, you just assembled very quickly without you know planning it or designing it. Uh, it's almost temporary yes. too. Makeshift is when something is makeshift, it's not for forever. It's not permanent. Right. It's not meant to last. It's not made to last. So, Sue, I'm kind of in a similar situation to you. Yeah. You know, my, what's, yeah, what's yours like? Yeah, my full-time job, of course, is I work at a university as an English instructor. But the whole university went online for the last semester. And even now we are in the summer session and I'm teaching a summer course, but it is all entirely online as well. So okay, uh, I have an office at the university, but uh, I share it with another professor and he is a new father and he lives in a very small apartment and he has uh, a baby and he finds it very hard to work at his apartment with the baby crying. Oh, right. He can't make lecture videos for his students with his baby crying in the background. So we kind of made uh, 
an agreement that he will take the office for filming his videos and I will work from home because I don't have a crying baby so I can do it comfortably at my house. So uh, yeah, my house right now, my apartment is kind of a makeshift office, makeshift film studio because the way that I am teaching my students is a kind of blended mixed methods approach where I am doing some video recordings and some lecture okay. recordings, uploading them to the internet so that students can watch. And then we're also using a video chatting software called Zoom to meet together so that we can practice conversation and so that I can, you know, give them feedback and all of those things that sure. students need for a conversation class, right? And do you do breakout rooms and have annotation and kind of also utilize all of those uh, tools on Zoom as well? Yeah. So that is one cool feature about Zoom is you can do these things called breakout rooms, which are just kind of small group meeting rooms, right? So I can bundle, <laughs> bundle or group students together and have them work on small small group activities and speaking tasks and that kind of thing. And yeah, it's not a perfect replacement. I still think that, you know, probably in the classroom is the best way to actually practice speaking and to do conversation activities. Yeah, for uh, sure. I think, you know, I've had students abuse the Zoom <laughs> situation because they will be Zooming in from the subway, from the bus, uh, driving in their car, on the beach, in the park, all sorts of different places. What? <laughs> oh my gosh, that's crazy. And so they're not even really fully paying attention to the class. Yeah, and- They're that, driving, right? Right, that's... yeah, I had that student hang up. I said, don't drive and zoom in. You are absent from this class. That <laughs> That is not participating. It's unfortunate because you know, half or more than half of the students are really engaged and, you know, they want to get the value that they paid. Uh, they're paying tuition fees. They want to get that value and learn something from the class, right? Whereas other students are using it as an excuse for an extended vacation or even while we are doing the Zoom live lessons and conversation activities, maybe they're at home, but they're not really focused you know, I can see them moving their fingers on the keyboard, playing games or watching YouTube videos. So that's one of the challenges I think all teachers are facing. <laughs> totally. It's funny. I think in their mind, they think it's better to be in person. And I think to some extent it is better. Mm -hmm. However, I would say that with my work, what's great about be doing online work is we can video record our whole session mm -hmm. and I can get up very close into the camera to the point where they can really see inside my mouth, mm. which is something that they would never be able to do in person. I mean, I just would never get that close to somebody. Especially after COVID. <laughs> exactly. And I had one student actually message me and say, no, I was like, hey, I just wanted to check in and see if you want to join our class. We've been having a class every week and you used to be in the class. And would you like to continue to join? I just you came up in my mind. I thought it would be cool to reach out, see how mm. you were. Mm -hmm. And the student told me that they really are against online stuff. And I'm like. "Ooh, well, I, w I was like, that's must make things tough for you, but also just so you know, because of the nature of what we do we're not going to be in person for a long time mm. because, I mean, for my work, because mm. we can't wear a mask, right? We have right. to do, I need to see their mouth and we need to be closer than two meters because I need to see what's going on. And we're get, we're talking about over articulation where we're like, you know, like spitting and yeah. there's no way we can be in person <laughs> until there's like a vaccine yeah that is totally true yeah so i was like it may be a long time till we see each other unless you want to adapt to the way things are 
there are pros and cons to learning and teaching online. Absolutely. Um, yeah. I think one of the, the things that you just mentioned about the recording aspect, that's really awesome. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, yeah, definitely recording, keeping a record. And for students being able to go back and review the material that we've covered in such detail. Totally. That's really, really cool. And I find yeah. also for students making presentations, Making a presentation through Zoom is a lot less stressful for them than making a presentation yeah. in real life. So, um, yeah, there are definitely some advantages to Zoom. I still think, you know, I personally, I prefer getting out into the classroom, meeting with students in real life, talking with them totally. in a more natural environment because, yeah, I don't know, inviting them into my home here is a little bit strange as well, but... That's one of the things that I've installed in my house, in my quote unquote home office, is this green screen that you see behind yeah. me, Suzanne. Yeah. And the green <laughs> screen allows me to change the background image on Zoom. The nice thing about the green screen is it allows me some separation between my home life and my work life. So if you know, I'm really busy in the morning and I didn't make my bed or if I have books lying all over the floor behind me, then I can just turn that off and nobody needs to see that, which uh, is really cool. It's a nice feature being able to have that balance between work life and professional life like that. I, I, I envy you because I'm always rushing to make my bed and I there's like all these pillows and I don't even know if people can tell if it's made or if it's just a bunch of pillows like <laughs> behind me, you know, uh, I think your background looks pretty good. I think you've got a pretty good setup there. But it's funny, Suzanne, that we were both just laughing about how we're kind of spending a lot of time at home, working at home and we're crammed into these smaller spaces than we're used to. But uh, we're making it work, right? You're working in your space close to your bedroom and I'm working in my bedroom. And so there, there are experts that point out that you could actually damage your sleep patterns if you're um, working or doing kind of very awake activities, activities that require you to be very alert in your resting space. Right. And... Um, the, the reason why I'm in the bedroom is we actually do have a second bedroom office. Mm -hmm. However, my fiance, Olivier, he mm -hmm. is using that room because he is, um, also working from home, which mm -hmm. is new. Right. So he usually didn't work from home. So that's the big difference. And I usually worked in the main living area, but. We decided it was healthier for our relationship and for just like the feng shui of the house in a way yeah. to not be working and talking and teaching or having meetings in the shared space. Like for us to each have a private space and then kind of move into the kitchen or the living room when we need to rest or just kind of get away from the work. But for me, it's difficult because it is harder for me to sleep. Mm, okay. So it has been affecting your sleep because you've moved your professional activities into that kind of restful space of the bedroom. Yes. So what I've had to do, Andrew, is kind of like do a ritual. So like at the end of the evening, I move everything out. Mm. I like bring it back into a bedroom mode. Okay. And I kind of like I spray lavender, a uh, yep. sheet spray. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And and I like dim the lights and I make it like into a bedroom vibe gotcha. so that I can kind of turn off in my mind. Mm -hmm. And this really helps me to have that work life rest balance, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I should try doing something like that because to be honest with you, the first thing that I see when I open my eyes is my computer and my desk. And Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I need to orientate my bed uh, a different direction or something to keep that a little bit 
separated, but um, right, yeah, I, that's I, a good idea. I don't think it's been affecting my sleep too much. Uh, there are definitely a lot of perks to working at home as well. You know, like uh, you get a little bit of extra sleep. You don't need to commute in the morning. Yeah, um, that's you true. can do your work at any time of the day, right? Like usually, I have a set. Class schedule. Oh, this class is from 11 a.m. till 12:30 p.m. Something like that. Now I could film the lecture video from that class at 3 a.m. in the morning if I wanted to. It doesn't、yeah. really matter when I do it. So the flexibility of the schedule is something that I enjoy as well. So there are some perks to doing it, but yeah, this is one big negative. I guess we could say is that the boundary between You know our restful space, our home, and then our professional workspace is totally evaporated. But I like this idea. That's great that you can just pack it up and put it away every night. I guess that's、um, that MacGyver、yeah. ability coming back,、yeah. <laughs> Suzanne. <laughs> it's it's definitely more work. It's it's annoying. I'd rather be able to just like leave the room and be like, okay, it'll be there tomorrow when I get back. But The ritual of it does help,、um, even if it's not,、uh, even if it's kind of like tedious、yeah. to do every evening. It's where we're at, right? It's where we're at right now. We got to adapt. We have to adapt to the changes of the world, and you know, it won't ever be the way it was. Even if we do, hopefully, go back to the classroom or invite people over, we still have to be careful or. You know, take precautions and things, so it's it'll never be carefree,、um, right? Right. So、yeah. this is kind of the the new normal, as people are calling it, the new normal. Yeah. And we'll just have to to wait and see what happens. But it's cool, Suzanne, that at least we are both still working. Right. We are very very fortunate、yes. in that regard. That so we, grateful. We're able to transition to working from home. I know that's not the case for everybody, but. Uh, we are、yeah. the lucky ones, and I I'm curious about our listeners because I I know COVID has been affecting almost every country on Earth, and I'm sure a lot of our listeners、uh, can sympathize with us, and because they are going through the exact same thing where they are working from home. So, listeners, we would love if you sent us an email, dropped us a line, and let us know. What your home workspace is like, and if you enjoy working from home, or if you hate it, just let us know how it's going. We would really be interested to hear about everyone's special work situations. And our email is contact at qlips dot com. Guys, if you like studying with Culips, if you enjoy listening to us and learn a lot with us, then please support us. One of the best ways that you can do that is by becoming a Culips member, and there are a lot of perks to becoming a Culips member, such as you will get unlimited access to our study guide library. So we make a study guide. For each and every episode, it is jam-packed with a lot of material that is designed to help you improve your English and make studying with us more enjoyable and really more efficient. So, to sign up and become a Culips member, just visit our website culips.com, and you can do that. But that's not the only way that you can support us. You could also Follow us on social media, or tell your friends about us, or leave us a nice review and a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for listening, and stay tuned for another episode coming to you soon. We'll talk to you all soon. Bye. Goodbye.